it's only September and it's so cold. But let's talk about cold case from London, Ontario. This is the case of Felisa Lecky, 25 years old. She was a mother of two boys. She had an eight-year-old son named Sean and an eight-month-old at the time named Rain. And on March 24th of 2009, her fiancé came home from his work in his night shift at about 7 a.m. in the morning and found her on a live body in their living room. Becky was 25 years old when she was murdered in this southwest London apartment building. She'd been asphyxiated. She was discovered by her common-law husband when he arrived back at the third floor unit early in the morning hours of March 24, 2009. His eight-month-old son was, you know, their eight-month-old son was unharmed and in his crib in his room. So he called 911 and they came out obviously and started to investigate. But they've been very tight lipped on the evidence that they have. She passed away because of asphyxiation. So someone, you know, strangled her. The only evidence that police are revealing that they have is a note that was left by the person, the perpetrator. But they're not revealing the contents of that note. All they're saying is that it was typed up by a typewriter, which is very odd to have in these modern times, you know? Even though this was 2009, like still, nobody was really using typewriters then. There's a note by, left by the killer. While I can't discuss uh, what the note said, I would tell you that it was produced on a typewriter, which even in 2009 was unusual. The typewriter was determined to be an older, um, impact style model typewriter with a fabric ribbon. We're providing this information to you uh, with the hope that this piece of information will tweak somebody's memory. You know, it could have been bought at a garage sale as like a souvenir kind of thing, like collector item, or it could have just been an elderly or an older person that had one. So is this perpetrator older or is he younger? but just had access to a typewriter, like maybe his grandparents or an aunt, an older aunt or uncle or something. I don't know. I'm just, you know, throwing thoughts out there. So that is something very distinctive that if you knew somebody with a typewriter, you would, I would think, I'm like, is he the person? Is he the person? They did release a videotape of a possible suspect but, you know, it was caught on civilian's camera, but it's not very clear. So I'll put, I'm going to insert it here. And I'm also going to insert a video of her son, her older son, Sean, talking about the effects of his mother being unalived, you know, when he was such a young age and the perpetrator still has not been caught. I always say somebody knows something. Somebody knows something, but what police hasn't said, or I haven't come across it, I'm going to look again before I post this video, is that if they have DNA, I would think that they do because you're strangling somebody. You have to be very personal, like in your face kind of thing. So DNA, but police hasn't said that they, they have it. I mean, like, why would that be something they keep back? But then investigators do weird things sometimes, you know? But yeah, I'm going to insert the clips here of her son talking and the police, you know, giving more details. And as always, links will be in the description. Share this video if you're on YouTube. Like, it's free. A like, a thumbs up. Leave a comment, you know? But yeah. Thank you for watching. I know I hardly ever say that and I have manners and I'm sorry. I just go straight into the points of the case so I don't forget. And then I forget to like, you know, say thank you to my subscribers. Thank you for those that leave comments, that like and share. I appreciate it. Keep on doing it. But yeah, I'm going to attach the clips here of the 
of her son, Sean, and the police investigators. I was definitely a mother's boy, just by the nature of my upbringing. My father was the working man and the more strict parent, and my mother was a very kind woman. She wasn't perfect, but she did everything she knew to do to raise her two kids. She faced many struggles in life, just like anyone else. It's unbelievable that 10 years ago, she was taken from us, from myself, my brother, her fiance, her family, my father's family. It affected everyone who had come in contact with her to know that someone so special to us could be gone in an instant. It feels like forever ago and yesterday all at once. And I know that makes no sense, but anyone who has experienced loss can understand it. 10 years ago, I was an eight-year-old boy making his three through life just learning who I was. That morning when the news broke, I was in denial. It did hit me then, but it wasn't until a few weeks later that it all set in. Many days I would just stay in bed, staring at the ceiling, wondering how any of it could have happened. I didn't know how to feel. It was my first hard loss, and it really changed how I deal with loss today. I was unmotivated in everything I did for the next few months. Every time something new would happen, I think she's not here. She's not here to see me get glasses. She's not here to see me graduate fourth grade, play an instrument, find who I was. I couldn't imagine anyone who would want to hurt her, and I still can't. I'm taking those words right from my great-grandfather, but I mean them. And so here we are 10 years later. I'm in college. I have a love life. And she didn't get to see any of that happen. And she wasn't there to support me. I just want you to think about yourself in such a situation. I don't want sympathy. I just want it over with. I want to know why someone would want to hurt my mother and everyone around her so badly. If you have any info, please, please come forward. Even the smallest thing. Reporting can do nothing but help the case along. And it doesn't take very much of your time. Thank you. Okay, Sean. Um... I think probably the best way to start this, if you're comfortable, is just to talk about your mom. What kind of person was your mom as you remember as a, as a young boy? Well, of course, it's difficult to remember someone that you last knew 10 years ago. Uh, things fade. But she was a just a genuinely nice person. She, she didn't know how to parent like any parent would know the first time I was the first mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. But she tried her hardest. She made connections with everyone, and anyone who came around her was just touched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you obviously have some uh, memories of her, some maternal memories, like one specific incident that you, you think back with fondness. Uh, is, there a, is there something that, that you think of often when you think of her, if, if you wish to share that? Um, a lot of times when both her and Derek were available, we would go down to the different parks. We would just walk around. Um, I was a big bug collector, so yeah. I would catch my butterflies. And um, sometimes she'd bring along food. We'd do a little picnic. And that, that was probably my, my favorite thing to do. And we'd do it maybe once, twice a month. So. Right, right. Um, what do you remember about uh, her passing in terms of uh, the pain it might have caused you or the confusion it might have caused you given your young age? When the police came in, I thought it was a joke, uh, a, a prank. I was big into the, the TV prank shows when I was young. So I was like, no, this, this couldn't be real. This isn't real. Stop it. Quit it. I quit it. Um, so it was, uh, it didn't really hit me until two, three weeks later. And then after that, I wouldn't say that my, my studies fell, but just my, my personality and uh, the way I presented myself to people, I became much more uh, closed in, mm -hmm. in weight. So you, you felt like your personality changed, that you wanted to kind of protect yourself from the pain and people's reaching in to know about your life, given mm -hmm. what had happened? Um, at the time, I did have a uh, counselor, a, a play counselor, yeah. if you will. Sure. Um, and that was, I, I never really liked to talk about it once it set in. It was just, if it came to me, I'd talk about it. And if it didn't, I'd rather just focus on everything else. Mm -hmm. And right now, as you move ahead, you're focusing on, you know, in school and that sort of thing. How often does uh, thoughts of your mom and uh, 
the, the tragedy and uh, well, I guess you can say the tragedy, the deliberate act that, that took your life. Um, once or twice a year, I'll look back into it, dive back into the Wikipedia and the Google searches, uh, which is a bit difficult because the internet was a different place even 10 years ago. A lot of the links are gone. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from that, I kind of have my own way of dealing with it. Uh, I find that I compartmentalize a lot of m my loss now. So it's, uh, I, I don't really bring it to the forefront very much. And, and obviously the police are, are contacting you and asking you to do this to, and to help get a resolution. Uh, a resolution that I, I, I'm assuming, tell me otherwise, but I assume you, you want to have. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you did the video, you're, you're talking to us. Um, what is it that you uh, hope? I mean, I, I guess I know the answer, but tell me. I want someone to come forward. Um, really, that is the biggest thing that can help any of us right now, the police and my family. And I don't know who is out there, but we have to believe that someone is out there with info. Mm -hmm. So just stepping forward is the, the most important thing to me right now, to hear someone say something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so um, by getting the message out in 10 years later, and now this information, which I'm, I know they've shared with you about the typewriter, a few little more things are popping up here and there. Are you, are you feeling that you might get there, get what you're hoping for? It's really hard to tell at this point. Ten years have gone by, and I know cases have been solved with a lot more time on them than that, but people's memories fade easily. And uh, like I can't even remember my mother's voice, and that breaks my heart. So I just I don't know why if someone came forward, why they would be waiting so long. Um, why they would hold that in. I really do hope if someone's out there that they, they let that out. Um, yeah. And you were able to come forward. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's all I need, unless you want to say something uh, more specific. It's up to you. 